Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing adenomatoid odontogenic tumors. This presentation has been put together under the supervision of Dr. Kim at the University of Nebraska Medical Center College of Dentistry. Adenomatoid odontogenic tumors, or AOTs, are uncommon, non-aggressive neoplasms. They arise from the odontogenic epithelium and are classified as a mixed tumor due to them usually containing connective tissue elements, dentin, and enamel-like calcifications. AOTs are subclassified based on their location as central or peripheral. Additionally, central AOTs are further delineated into follicular or extrafollicular based on their association with the tooth follicle. Figure 1 shows a panoramic radiograph depicting an adenomatoid odontogenic tumor involving the crown of tooth number 22 in a 12-year-old female patient. The typical clinical finding associated with an AOT is that they are painless and do not infiltrate bone. With a 2 to 1 predilection in women to men, the majority of AOTs occur in women around 16 years old in the anterior maxilla above an unerupted cuspid. AOTs are known as the two-thirds tumor. This is because two-thirds of cases are seen in the maxilla, two-thirds of cases are in young females, and two-thirds of cases are associated with an unerupted tooth, and two-thirds of the cases are associated with canines. The prognosis of an AOT tumor is generally excellent, with no recurrence being the most common clinical outcome. In Figure 2, we see another classic panoramic example of unilocular AOT involving the crown of an impacted maxillary canine with a well-demarcated border. Due to their formation during tooth development, AOTs are commonly found in a radiographic setting of a mixed dentition. At least 75% occur in the anterior maxilla or mandible. The anterior region, and especially near the cuspids, are the usual area involved in both jaws. Though this is common, a follicular AOT may have a relationship with impacted teeth and does not often demonstrate an association with the CEJ. Rather, the lesion surrounds a greater part of the tooth crown and root. This radiograph is of a 28-year-old female patient with an impacted mandibular canine surrounded by an adenomatoid odontogenic tumor. On a radiograph, an AOT lesion usually displays a well-defined and corticated peripheral border of variable thickness. In two-thirds of cases, the internal appearance AOT lesions are either largely radiolucent or mi mixed radioopacity. The appearance of the mixed radioopacity may vary from a faint, delicate radioopaque foci to one with more dense clusters with ill-defined calcifications present. Occasionally, the calcifications of an AOT may have well-defined borders resembling small pebbles. To visualize this completely might require the increased resolution of intraoral imaging. Microscopic studies have verified that the size, number, and density of an AOT's small radioopacities varies from tumor to tumor and increases with age. In this computed tomography image of a 29-year-old male with an adenomatoid odontogenic tumor, numerous punctate radioopaque foci are arranged circularly at a specific distance from the margin. The buccolingual cortex are expanded slightly and thinned by the lesion as well. As the tumor enlarges, some expansion of the jaw may occur. However, the outer cortex is maintained. Adenomatoid odontogenic tumors may cause the displacement of adjacent teeth. However, root resorption is rare. If the epicenter of the lesion is located coronal to a developing tooth, it may inhibit eruption of the tooth. In Figure 5, we see a CBCT demonstrating a classic AOT. Shown are the internal radioopaque foci surrounding the maxillary canine. However, the panoramic image D, we can only see a few thin radioopaque lines representative of these. Notice the enlarged interdental space. The displaced roots of the lateral incisor and first premolar and the absence of root resorption. In figure 6, a 22-year-old female presents with an interradicular AOT in the anterior mandible. Notice the distal root displacement of the second premolar, the smooth sclerotic margins, and the absence of root resorption. The dentigerous cyst is a second most common type of cyst in the jaws and usually develops from the proliferation of the reduced enamel epithelium. The follicular variant of an AOT is often mistaken for a dentigerous cyst because both lesions can appear as radiolucent lesions 
and both can be associated with impacted teeth. A key difference between AOTs and a dentigerous cyst is that DCs are never associated with the root of a tooth and are also attached at the CEJ. Contrastingly, AOTs can be associated with part of the root, but typically do not have an association with the CEJ, but surrounds a greater part of the tooth crown and root. Furthermore, AOTs may have internal radiopacities, whereas DCs are homogeneously radiolucent. If, for example, the radiolucent entity is located more apical to the CEJ, a dentigerous cyst can be ruled out. Both dentigerous cysts and AOTs are often associated with maxillary canines. However, DCs are also commonly associated with third molars while AOTs are rarely associated with permanent molars. Figure 7 shows the epicenter of a DC extending from 25 to 31, enclosing a permanent right mandibular canine. Another differential diagnosis for the adenomatoid odontogenic tumor is a calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor, or also known as Pinborg tumors. These are locally aggressive benign odontogenic neoplasms that arise in the epithelium. Calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumors are rare and only represent less than 1% of all odontogenic tumors. As represented by the case photos, calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumors are most common in the 4th through 6th decade of life and have no gender bias. This differs from adenomatoid odontogenic tumors, which are more common during the 2nd decade and are more commonly found in females. As shown in the figures, this 50-year-old male presented to the oral and maxillofacial surgeon with pain and swelling in the body of the left side of the mandible. The lesion had progressively increased in size over two years, leading to facial asymmetry. As seen in figure 8, the pantomograph revealed a mixed radiolucent radiopaque lesion, indicating either an anatomatoid odontogenic tumor or a calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. The lesion was confirmed in the pre-surgical CT scan, shown in figure 9 as being a calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor due to the presence of osteolytic lesion with foci of calcifications. As previously mentioned, the patient demographic allows a differential diagnosis since radiographically it is hard to tell the difference between calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumors and adenomatoid odontogenic tumors. Adenomatoid odontogenic tumors can be confused also with an ameloblastic fibroodontoma. Ameloblastic fibroodontomas are rare, mixed odontogenic tumors that are derived from epithelial and ectomesenchyme cells that form the dental tissues. An ameloblastic fibroodontoma is a benign, slow-growing, expansile tumor that presents as well-defined radiolucent area with radioopaque masses contained within it. Ameloblastic fibroodontoma lesions are usually diagnosed during the first and second decades of life, as seen in this 11-year-old girl who presented with ameloblastic fibroodontoma in her left mandible, as indicated in the panoramic radiograph in figure 10. The lesion shows a well-defined radiolucent region containing a radioopaque mass extending from the lower left second molar or tooth numbered 18 to the left ramus. This presentation can overlap with adenomatoid odontogenic tumors, but ameloblastic fibroodontomas are more commonly found in the molar area of the posterior mandible. Unlike the adenomatoid odontogenic tumors that are commonly found involving the crown of canines. Continuing from the previous slide, these axial and coronal CT scans show an 11-year-old female patient presenting with ameloblastic fibroodontoma as seen in figure 11. It also shows a well-defined radiolucent lesion with a calcified mass of odontogenic tissue. Figure 12 shows a cone beam CT scan of the same lesion with the characteristic location of ameloblastic fibroodontoma in the posterior mandible. Odontogenic keratocysts are another possible differential diagnosis for adenomatoid odontogenic tumors. Developing from the dental lamina, the lumen of an odontogenic keratocyst often contains a cheesy material with keratinized lining epithelium. Radiography of an OKC varies from an AOT lesion in several ways. OKCs can be uni or multilocular, while AOTs are unilocular lesions only. 
OKCs appear as purely radiolucent, while AOTs are radiolucent or mixed radio density. Additionally, location varies. 90% of odontogenic keratocysts occur in the posterior body of the mandible, while an AOT lesion usually surround the crown of unerupted teeth. Anterior maxillary canine is the most classic example. The size two of these two lesions can be a distinguishing feature as well. OKCs perform osseous tun tunneling with minimal jaw expansion. This leads to a larger lesion, usually upon diagnosis. In contrast, AOTs are generally smaller lesions, only 1 to 3 centimeters, and are found pericoronal to maxillary canines. Calcifying odontogenic cysts should also be considered when assessing adenomatoid odontogenic tumors, also known as dentinogenic ghost cell tumors. COCs are slow-growing and benign cysts that produce a calcified matrix of dysplastic dentin. With the same distribution, similar radio-opaque calcifications and overlapping presentations, differentiating between AOT and COC lesions can be difficult. However, some subtle differences are, though COCs are usually painless, pain can occur with them. AOTs are usually completely painless. COCs appear only centrally in the bone, while AOTs are found both centrally within the bone and peripherally. And histologically, COCs are dysplastic dentin, while AOTs possess connective tissue elements, dentin, or enamel-like calcifications. Treatment of an AOT is a conservative surgical excision. This works well because an AOT lesion is not locally invasive and is well encapsulated. This makes the lesion easily separable from bone. In addition, it has a very low reoccurrence rate at approximately 0.2%. Figure 16A is an example of a surgical excision site of an AOT. Figure 2B is a picture of the growths that were retrieved from the excision site. The following is a detailed list of the sources used in the making of this presentation. Thank you for watching.